side to side allows you to pull up so you're not feeling locked in and you're not feeling too separated. So even when they, when they start just to get them to let those toes go forward so they can feel like they can, be, they can push against them or fall with them, right? And then you talked about the depths, right? So you can explain it kind of in layers. So I don't know how you teach defense probably in layers, right? But you know, really when you go on, you get the earlier piece, you get the top of the piece, and then you got that layer you add, put it to break away or two on one. And then you can just start working in between the layers. So maybe you want to start along on this side, face the blue line, and just mid depth, and they're going to move up to the top. Then they're just going to glide back and set back to mid depth and kind of close. They're tall, glide out, and set back to the first. All right, and fine. So they're working between mid and top. And then you can even do a little bit the same way there. So then just a little bit of that gliding where they're starting to get those layers. They don't want to break away then. You know, they want to say, come out here, they're going to wait till the player, whatever, hits uh, the first hash mark, and once that happens, they're going to start to settle, right? But you want them to get a feeling where they know they're going to settle in the middle of the crease, and that's where it ends, right? They're going to step, and they're going to go side to side, and they're not just going to keep on gliding back in their net. Then you can do a little bit of stuff just with some one leg stuff. I know Jess did a lot of this with full legs, even when they're just sort of keeping one leg. On their clothes, they're just live and right, or one leg on top of the boots, and they're kind of live. So you start to work on a little bit of that rotation, whether they're squaring one way or they're opening one way, depending on if it's a kind of a high up play and they want to get some load, so they're able to rotate and push, or if they want to get it's a low play, and they basically just want to be square to the middle. So take a little bit of gliding around the crease, also, depending on that stuff. same kind of things over and over again. If I'm doing a normal drill where say I'm coming out here, second push I'm coming across, and then third push and put back to post. And do the same kind of thing. Go out to the other side, then come back, and then we're back in the post. So the thing to be thinking about is starting with your eyes looking in the corner on the go, your eyes are looking first, rotating in line with the Leg is transferring your weight, and then once you get there, you take it a head check back every time, just so they get all those good tracking abilities going all the time. Where they're always leading with their eyes, they're always taking a head check back, and then it applies to the game. If they've got time in a game, then they're taking their head check because they're so used to it. Right? And it's the same kind of thing if I'm going across. I'm saying eyes first, rotating your line, transferring your weight. Always stopping with your lead foot, taking a head check back when you get there, and leading with your eyes again. Same thing if I'm going back, I'm looking back, rotating, transferring my weight, taking another head check back. Just so you get all those good habits going every time. And it could depend, each drill can be the same kind of thing. If I'm coming up to the middle, I'll be looking with my eyes first, rotating in line, transferring my weight, and taking a head check back when I get there. And then you can, you can start doing drills just from the start, or whatever you want to do for, for just how you're coming up. You can do next drill, maybe you're coming up the middle, going to the side, and then we're coming across. Next push, I'm coming back. And then you can just get a lot of flow with it. You start out with the easier stuff, once they get down with it, then we can start doing a little more stuff where it's a little harder for them each time, right? And then we can start doing butterfly slides. And once they do more of that stuff on their feet, they're used to standing and getting their motion going, then we can start adding some butterfly slides and whip them, right? 
Instead of him getting behind me here, where my push might end up being high, and then I'm stuck up to reach back to close off the rest of the space. So just always taking those checks. When I take my look, I'm always looking for just where he is compared to this back foot there. If he's above, then I know I'm fine. Depending on his stick too, if say he's a, he's a right-handed shot on that side, he's closer to the middle of the ice, and the pass is coming from here, then I should be able to beat it on my feet most of the time, unless he's coming in really close. And that's just a lot of head checks where I've taken my look and I see him coming in tight to the crease, and then it's more of a push to his stick, where if he's a little farther out when I take my look, I know I can probably beat that on my feet and get set for the shot. Okay? I'll do an example of him. They start in the corner. You got a drover, guy's got a puck, and he's walking up above the circle, cutting the cross, and I'm shooting back to the same side. So if I'm on my post, I'm watching him. As he starts to go up the ice, I'm going to rotate in line as I'm starting to come out to him so I can take away far side. As he starts to walk across, then I'm going to start to line up my weight as he gets closer to my lead foot. As he keeps going, I'm going to keep going whole time so that if he does shoot back to short side then that puck's coming back through my body instead of him being up there and I'm cut off a little bit early and now we can see a lot of room on that side. Okay? okay. So just just in, in that specific you saw all the you saw the team pushes, you saw the skulls, you saw the shuffles. Uh, one one difficult teaching aspect of, of a coach watching that shuffle right there one difficult uh, 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 thing to, to identify with the kids is, is how he generated the power and how he's able to push. And so it's just a little transfer. So show him that little transfer, how you get the weight off of his leg so he can generate it. Yeah, and a lot of that is just so if I'm maybe lined up here, I might just shift quickly so I can get all my weight on that back leg. And I now I'm coming into a cross where if I'm really going over to that side and it goes like That's a lot of just weight transfer, making sure they're loading up all the way onto that leg, and on that side, and that's a lot easier to hard push with. Unless, you know, I might be more standing up. Now I don't have a lot of weight there. It's more even down on each leg, and I'm going to be able to get a hard push with it, right? So that, 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 that. The point is, oftentimes, if you want to move to your left, you have to load with your right. If you want to move to your right, you have to load to your left. And oftentimes you see goaltenders leading with their head because they're watching the puck, watching the puck, watching the puck. And as they lead with their head, they, they lift, end up with the leg, uh, weight on the lead foot, and they zap the power back here. So that's a, that's a typical error for young goaltenders. They see the puck and they want to go to the puck, but as a result, they zap the power and they're going to move to the puck. So it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, some of you guys have seen the minor hockey. 
hockey ice is that we do, I do a lot of just making sure they can hold their weight on one leg. Yeah. So we can be going up the ice or you can do it on just a line where they're trying to transfer weight on the line on the one leg and then they're shifting back onto the other side, shifting all their weight in line. I can really hold it, I can lift it, I can drop, everything can just come on that leg. If I'm going to the other side, they're really shifting my knees in line with my toe. Chest to sit right over top, so I'm not too heavy over top, kind of more evened out with them, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's a great, it's a great way to to, to get them to identify uh, the, the edges, to be able to pull the edges, and to be able to more strength in the balance. Yeah, and I think the thing is too when you're talking about is when you're falling the puck a lot of times in a shot when you're when you're falling the pass. You know, you look a lot of times they're tee gliding and they're attacking the play. It's a lot easier to tee glide and attack, right? It's Go back to the club sometimes, especially the younger guys, it's easier to shuffle. But I think the other thing too is just when you're, when you're talking about the movement, a shuffle is more like a pull, right? So if, if you're falling, you're going to pull. You're going to right? So you're, you really don't want to go for a ton of weight transfer or separation. You basically just want to keep them safe together in the same place where a, you know, a T push is a, is a push, right? You're pushing everything out as far as you can, bringing it back up. Definitely when you're talking to the kids, try to get them to feel that motion where they're, they're pulling and they're pulling from the shuffle and they're, and they're pushing from the cheek line, right? So. I can give you an example. So like if I'm watching a point shot and the guy's just moving across, I might not have my weight so shifted to one side because I want to be able to see him on there. So I can just shift across to the other side where if he's coming down the wing, I might really want to load up because I can see that guy over there. I want to be able to bring the part of the shoulder. On that, on that, uh, that starting position. So you establish the point shot there, and you're, and you're getting eyes on it, and then he passes cross ice to his partner. Give us your adjustment there. And then I might take a quick check back when I get there, just to make sure if he's passed, he might jump. So I want to see where he is. I need to make that depth adjustment. So again, that's the, that's the shuffle and team push. Adjustments, that's it. Those are the two. And getting this and down adjustments <coughs> from a skating standpoint, that's it. Those are the two. Now you can understand how creative you have to be because it's really only two pushes. <laughs> if you want to keep them engaged, you're going to have to come up with different pieces. And you know all the scenarios. You just have to incorporate it in early. Yeah. 
time. So pretty simple. This this is more for the hot water one. And uh I think it's not so much push up. You're just gonna start the goalies at the post and it's just one push up, shuffle up, shuffle up. Stay the same. Then we're going to the middle, shuffle up. Here you get your pivot, just keep pushing. There, shuffle up. Pivot, pivot here. I've just incorporated all the adjustments on my skates with respect to the pivot. Anything else you want to add to that? Or to the adjustment stuff? Yeah, and you can start into it here. If you want to use some master mechanics, you can just even that so you can use a lot of time. Making cross, so you're just kind of doing those same movements off your post with some repetition, and you got the head adjustments, and you got kind of the mid gap, and then even if you do the next one, you're just going to keep that. The same thing, so you do something simple like that, just so they're, they're pushing hard, slapping hard, and then you got a little bit of rotations too. Those two drills, like, that's the thing that's the way you need. Obviously they're going to go here, here, or here. Right? And you need to build some repetition with them. It's just great. You can also get the legs and the legs and the legs. Right? Yeah, if you want to do, like you're talking about beating that pass, right? So, depends on the level of goal. You're probably not going to want to beat it all the way across the start. But even something simple, you just shop it from the middle. Right? And the same thing. And then you can put the team on. You can go over it and then when it's like an old or shuffling and if you want to add the rush, like once you're doing the basic movement then you can just have that to the right to the place and then just beat it on their feet right with the shuffler or teeth. Right? But if you want them to stay up in this place, definitely get those reps going. If you do that five, six minutes a day, they're gonna get stronger, right? Okay, so the last little bit of mobility we have here is just post to post. So uh, this is really if we're going to have youngsters here that aren't going to be able to shuffle all the way across. So if, if it's a shuffle that we're working on, they're going to go post to post. It's okay to have a couple of pushes for the little guys. The bigger kids, they're going to start to realize they can get there in one, and they're going to they're going to incorporate that. So very simple. So let's just do a post to post angle adjustment, and then back to the post. Yeah. So I might be an angle to this side. Yep. Yeah. Here, where I look, I rotate as I look. As I go to push, the skate is going to flatten out so I don't dig into the ice right away. As soon as I go to push, it's just on the other side. I go to that side, and I can take a quick check back. I come into this side, now I'm looking, I go to the line, cut my weight transfer. I can start with and just standing. 
second set once we've got the head rotating around a little bit. Side, taking a head check back, then I'm going to get up the butterfly down. Same thing pretty much as I'm going to the other side. I'm looking, I'm rotating the line, transferring my weight. And taking the head check back, drop it down, next row, I'm looking, rotating, transferring. That's something that should be uh, identified as well. There are times when you're creating a work for the goaltender, reinforcing some conditioning and some, some hard work, but there's other times when we're paying attention to details. So balance that off. There's, there's moments during this sort of work where you can make them work hard. There's other moments where you really want them to pay attention to details and work that works way. Right, even to warm up, Jesse just started One puck to this pad, he touches it, he watches it out, he rotates it, and steps, gets that leg out, he just follows the rebound, right, and then back out, and then same thing down, just so they get a chance to watch the puck in, right? Maybe the first drill is all puck touches or pad touches, right? Just as they're touching the pad. And then even just a little more like face up drops, you know, these ones that be side to side. Now they're trying to use that stick, right? And then, you know, when you're talking to goalies, I think a lot of times it's Talk to them and see their folks in front of them. Like if Jesse's lined up to this face on box, find a close face up there. Go down. Really, if I shot low pads, it could only happen maybe that far. It would be a small little touch, especially at the left side when they're steering around. So you know, even then, start with some low shots and they just have that small touch. Then they can open it, follow the rebound, or even maybe just get them to follow with their eyes so you can get some repetition in them. I think also when you're doing the drills, be aware of you know, how much net there is from the face up, uh, how much net there is from the blue eye, and of course everybody knows how much net there is from the middle, just so they're kind of playing within those ranges. Or even if you're trying to have a little dab or your arm there in front, they may not know that that's as well as the and they're probably not going to have to, to reach or slide or anything outside of those areas. Yeah, that's a good way too. Like you can just do it shots on the outside, then you can get up and work on stuff and then you push it as far as you can pull it. You don't really want to fatigue wise because it's going to take a little more time to work on the skate, the turn, and then set when you get there. The shuffle is going to get you there a little quicker. So if I'm going to this side, I'm going to see the shot. This is, this is a save situation. We're trying to repeat saves, get some good flow going before they hit the net and they have competition against their teammates. So just remind your, your, your helpers and your assistants, let's get some saves in this guy before he starts competing against his teammates. Yeah, and like with some of those drills, it's, you know, you might not want your goaltender again to have a butterfly or do it three other butterflies a day because it's probably not good for your body. So that's why even with these warm-ups and stuff, start them down. Right? So they're not getting that <laughs> dropping, 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 right? So if you're doing some high stuff in the slot, you can start off and get a lot of shots. And if you're doing some low work in the pads and stuff, don't be afraid to start them on the ice. They're just focusing on that. They're not focusing on driving down and building a habit and also you know, putting the wear and tear on their body. It probably doesn't seem like a lot when you're dying, but it adds up, right? That's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. So a couple of a couple of other shot scenarios for your for your coach to get these kids warmed up. So we've seen, we've seen some of the motion. You can incorporate a little motion before you shoot the puck. You don't always have to have a pass and a shot you can create, whether it's a stick tap or 
coach says go. So let's let's have just a simple scenario of, of starting on the angle, starting on the angle with a face-off dot. And the coach has got his puck pile out. And then the drill is basically on your goal or on your stick pad, he, he, he uh, adjusts to the angle to the center. Once he arrives in the center, shoot the puck. He makes a save so he can, he can feel the puck with his, with his foot or his blocker. Covers back up, cracks his rebound, goes back to the corner of the crease, and you say go, and it hits the ice again, and again, fire the rebound. So we are creating, we are creating purpose shots here. We're hitting specific spots so we can repeat that drill. So if we if we did the same scenario and we and we decided we're putting the puck on the ice, we're creating a purpose shot so all the rebounds. For example, we go from the right pad in the right corner, always adjust to that rebound. And back set. So you don't want to have the example of, of the goaltender making this move and he comes across and he's supposed to recover to the to the left post, but you shoot it off the right post and it goes over there. Typically, in in terms of keeping the flow of the drill, you want the purpose shot to be where he reacts to the rebound. So that's always difficult if you have a drill where you have a second shot, the first shot has to be a perfect shot. So we, we did a we did a drill this morning. It's very simple. It was one shot onto his left foot. So I shoot the puck, or had somebody shoot the puck onto his left foot, and we had another player here with pucks. And he would just use his own puck as the rebound. So bang, shot to the shot to his left foot. And he'd track it onto his pad, he'd spray the rebound off into that corner, and he'd recover to that second puck over there, and it would be a typical rebound. Now you can understand how that'd be confusing if I stood here and shot it to his other foot, and then he had to recover to that rebound. So we wanted to create a little bit of a, a game resembling, resemblance to the drill, and that's, that's the way you do it. So if you're doing any rebound scenario, try and create the first play at the net as a purpose shot. Make it a, a legitimate rebound. Now, oftentimes they'll go up off the glass, but they get the idea they sent the rebound that way and they're recovering that way. One thing that young kids do is tell them where you're shooting. It, like, just when you're doing the drill, I know a lot of times when you say it's the assistant or the boss here helping, and they're shooting, it's a little intimidating for a seven year old yeah. to have some guy standing there 12 feet away and you don't know where you're shooting. Yeah. Just tell them you're going to go to your glove and give them a couple shots to the glove. Now you're blocker and then it gets them. They can actually focus on making a proper save rather than where's this big guy gonna fire it on? Okay. So if you're if you're combating that, that's that's uh, that's appropriate. That's very important too, is, is to let them know where you're going. But to enhance that, add some movement. So they're not just focused hundred percent, oh my god, the puck, the puck, the puck. They have to they have to accomplish some sort of movement before the puck. Arrive. So they've got to focus on the movement, capture the puck, and make a save. And it, it takes a little of that intimidation factor out. And uh, you know, again, when we get into these scenarios, it's critical that we're putting pucks on goalies to make saves. So the other example of that would be, let's say we're going to spend a few minutes with the goalie stopping the pucks behind the net. You don't want your coach ripping them so hard that they're flying around every time. What's the, what's the point? So you want to spot pucks in like they would have to recover pucks in game. So a, a pace of that one around the wall that makes it uh, appropriate for them to get in. With that point, do you think just sometimes maybe trying to get some good habits and then give them a bit of control? So even if, like if you're shooting the puck in the middle, you may just have to just like, on the side, right? Put it over there. So even, even though they can kind of still work on rushing it into it, and still do those things, but they're, they don't feel like their heads in there. So just some kids are just too good, right? Like they almost need to build that confidence on the ice, right? So even a little bit of start like that. So they're still getting their legs going, their cars going, they're still moving into the shot, but they're, they're away from it to start, so then it's their decision to go into it, right? I know, that's good. Um, so I guess the segue into uh, behind the net stuff is that that can be a part of this, puck skills can be a part of this kind of uh, practice as well. And uh, some, very, some very simple puck skill routines. Again, you, you want them to touch the puck back there. You want them to have repetition of being back there and touching the puck. 
And in most cases, in the majority of cases, when they get back there, it's just a stop. It really is in your game. There's very few times where you're going to shoot them away. So with that in mind, let's just uh, talk a little bit about the <coughs> The puck is dumped in, you can appreciate that they're, they're standing in the net to see the puck. And really, the, the whole activity is from basically this goal line to returning back to the front of the net. So, give us a scenario to square up and sometimes we puck on your stick. So, the puck's dumped in, yeah, coming this side. Step up, feel the puck. Reverse VH. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was saying my first VH. 